Hi and welcome to King's at Home Daily. My name's Goff, one of the leaders at King's and uh, it's my privilege this morning to be taking us through our little little study, our, these nuggets of hopefully encouragement from the Bible uh, to help us all as we go through these strange days. King's Church family, hi there. I was going to say nice to see you but can't. Be good to see you one of these days. Hope you're well. And others, you found your way to, to this uh, video, you're most welcome to join us today. Uh, Marcus got us underway yesterday in a, a new study on the book of Ephesians. We just take 10 minutes each day to look at a couple of verses to encourage our hearts. And uh, I've got just two verses, verses 3 and 4, and I'll read them to us now. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. So many wonderful truths in uh, packed into these verses. Um, first thing to say really is that what I've just read to you is the beginning of a, a great big long sentence that goes on 200 words as Paul tells us the the, the, the blessing what it, the blessing that it is to be to become a Christian a follower of Jesus um, it, it's as though he just as soon as he mentions the gospel as soon as he talks about what Jesus has done for us what what the, what the father has done in sending the son he just overflows with wonder at the gospel and that's just the first thing I'd want to bring to your attention this morning um, because at the heart of the matter Christianity is not just a theoretical thing oh yes that's interesting that's logical that makes sense that it no no that it's it's far far more than that it's it's a heart thing it's something that's gone right into our being it's there's been something that's of change that's happened in inside of us and uh, if you're not a follower of Jesus maybe you have just got a theoretical knowledge of the the gospel the good news the it, uh, until it's become personal for you it's it, it's going to be of no value to you we talk about giving our lives to Christ that's how we become Christians Jesus said take up your cross and follow me so it's a personal response to what Jesus has done for us in coming to earth in living among us the perfect life going to the cross taking upon himself the sin the grot the judgment that was due to us so that we could be forgiven and uh, and walk free because of what he has done for us and of course there's that lovely little phrase that that crops up there in in verse 3 it says the God has blessed us in the heavenly heavenly realm with every spiritual blessing in Christ everything that we have and receive as Christians comes because of our connection with Jesus and this is a lovely phrase that Paul uses again and again through his writings it's because we're in Christ we've given our lives to Christ and so we were joined with him as it were when he died on the cross our sins were forgiven and taken from us and we stopped living for ourselves started living for him and as he was raised from the dead so we have been raised into newness of life and just as he was he ascended and went to the father so one day we will ascend and go to be with the father and I remember for when when I was going through um, radiotherapy some years ago, this I really took hold of this phrase in my devotions, um, and, and and I would physically when I was praying I, I would do this with my hands. Lord Jesus, this is where my life is. My life is in Christ. That's where my life is now. So I'm not I'm not worried. I'm not fearful. My life is in Christ. I've given my life to you, Lord Jesus. I've, uh, I I know you as my Savior and Lord that's where my life is so whenever I, I was tempted to be anxious or whatever I would just literally do that remind myself my life is in Christ 
beautiful thing. Um, the next thing in, I notice here is the way that Paul just overflows, just spills over with, 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 with joy, with, with wonder when he speaks about the gospel, the good news. And he often does this when he's writing. As soon as he mentions the gospel, what Jesus has done, he, something, the Holy Spirit, wells up inside him. And he just, as it were, he goes off on one. Praise be to the God and Father. A 200 word sentence in these, 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 these verses in Ephesians 1. One continuous sentence as he just overflows with the wonder of the gospel. And I would just I would say to you this morning that um, that's another sign that you, that we are genuinely Christians, that we we it's gone from head to heart. Something has changed in us. Now, of course, you may look back and say, well, there was a time when I got excited about being a Christian and what Jesus has done for me. But 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 do you know what? I don't feel that anymore. Well, I, I would just challenge you on that point because. It, it, it's so important that our relationship with Jesus is alive and, 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 and on a daily basis that we don't become stale, that we don't lose the wonder. To quote that song, can't think what, what the song is, but there's a lovely chorus. May I never lose the wonder, the wonder of your mercy. And it just speaks about keeping a, a, a rejoicing, singing heart. May I never lose the wonder. So if you've, if you've lost the wonder, if you've lost that sense of joy, Ask the Holy Spirit to help you today. Holy Spirit, help me. Give me a fresh understanding. A few weeks back, I was preaching from Ephesians 3 at King's. And um, there's that prayer of Paul where he says, I'm praying that, that God would, would give, you power, give you power to grasp the height, the breadth, the depth, the extent of the love of God for you. And so whenever you open the Bible, it's a great thing to do. Lord... Open my eyes, excite my heart, make things real to me today because I don't want to go stale. So that's the first thing that I see there in that verse. One more thing from the next verse where it says, For he chose us in him, there it is again, in Jesus. He, God chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. That is just so uh, amazing, wonderful, just to think way, way back when, when stars were being formed and, and, and thrown into space. As before creation happened, the God of creation knew you. It's, it's astonishing, it's overwhelming, it's almost unbelievable. But here it is, he chose us in Jesus before the creation of the world. That is astonishingly, overwhelmingly wonderful. And um, of course, it's, it's a point that some people get very uh, hot under the collar about. Oh, predestination. Does that mean that um, I don't have a free will? That, not at all, because the Bible is very clear that uh, of our responsibility to choose him. But there's something here that we'll, we'll never quite understand, this side of heaven, that although we are on our journey to find him, actually, when we find him, we discover that he's been after us all the time. Let me read you some quotes of some people that you may have heard of. John Stott, Christian writer and a pastor, uh, he, wrote, he, he, he wrote this. Why I am a Christian is due ultimately neither to the influence of my parents or teachers, nor to my own personal decision for Christ, but to the hound of heaven, thinking of Francis Thompson's poem, the hound of heaven, that is, it's due to Jesus Christ himself, who pursued me relentlessly, even when I was running away from him in order to go my own way. And if it were not for the gracious pursuit of the hound of heaven, I would today be on the scrap heap of wasted and discarded lives. Francis Thompson was expressing what is true of every Christian. It has certainly be true, been true in my life. If we love Christ, it's because he first 
loved us. And that's something to, get, to be thrilled about and, and amazed about. That, that God likes you. <laughs> he loves you. He cares about you. Even when you were running in the other direction and without a thought for him. J.I. Packer, another Christian writer, favourite of mine. There's certainly great cause for humility in the thought that he sees all the twisted things about me that my fellow men don't see. He sees more corruption in me than I see in myself. But there is, however, equally great incentive to worship and love God in the thought that for some unfathomable reason he wants me as his friend and desires to be my friend and has given his son to die for me in order to realise this purpose. This is wonderful. This is astonishing. This too should make us worship. He chose you. So don't let it become a, uh, something you trip over, predestination. It, 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 there's, some, there's a matter of wonder here that he chose you. And I'll finish with um, one more quote here. And this is from Henri Nguyen. He says this. I'm beginning to see how radically the character of my spiritual journey will change when I no longer think of God as hiding out and making it as difficult as possible for me to find him, but instead as the one who is looking for me while I am doing the hiding. Let this truth thrill you. The hound of heaven, the love of God pursuing you way, way, way back before you were ever born setting his love upon you. Don't lose the wonder of the gospel. Have a good day.